what's going on everybody so finally I've come to uh, <laughs> finally get this damn thing installed okay so a little while ago I purchased a um, HID kit from Dial Dynamics and um, I have been having it in the garage for a while now I just haven't had time and uh, I figured the weather is halfway decent today so I might as well try to do this um, I'm gonna go on record right now by saying I've never done an HID install. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've seen videos in the past, so I've kind of got a gist of it. Um, I don't think I could possibly fuck it up too bad, but you know, anything's possible. Uh, I just wanna give a quick rundown of what came in this package, um, kind of what I think is about to happen, and then once we get into it, I'll show little things here and there. I don't want to get too, too crazy, but that'll probably end up happening anyway. So, as you can see, this is pretty much the whole layout. So, the kit came with a bulb for this side, which has its own wiring, um, a ballast for that bulb. And then we uh, scooch down here. Now, we have another ballast and another bulb, and then you've got the main setup here with the wiring. Um, I believe this was the extra part that I purchased from them. Um, this whole setup revolves around the fact that it's going to connect toward the power and ground of this area, okay? So if you look at everything, you know, when we get in depth, you'll see that there, I think that's a relay. Um, that cable is going to go toward this uh, side. It's going to get tucked in. There's going to be a lot of things. There's probably going to be some swear words involved. Um, I may or may not bleep them, and then, you know, you got a, you got a, a freaking ton of little wires, I'm sure I'm going to get frustrated, um, hopefully it looks, it looks good, uh, we have the LED bulbs on, and as good as they look, you know, I just wanted to try something else, and, you know, at least I know if I'm not happy with this overall look, I could just go right back to the LEDs, because I know I found what works, so basically, all we're going to be doing is just trying to install this. We're going to see if there is a significant difference. Um, I'm not going to be doing some crazy in-depth uh, comparison video. I will talk about my impressions. I'll most likely do like a little night driving clip, but that's about as uh, crazy as this is going to get because when you get involved with these like, oh, I'm comparing this and this, this light output has this and this is up here and it's got a crisp line here and it's like, uh, you know, you're blessing yourself because you're, you're drawing hand diagrams all over the place. That's not my style. I don't get too technical with that. Um, the other video that I'm going to be doing soon is I have the LMI intake. So this is going to be out of here very shortly. I was thinking about doing the intake first, but, you know, I don't know. And the only thing that's going to be like, ah, uh, you know, I have to drill into the dust cap. And I do have one of those like stepped up um, drill bit type things. But I don't think it's even wide enough still. So likely what I'll do is I'll start it with that. I'll get it to as far as I can go and hopefully I can have a drill bit wide enough or something. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do that's wide enough for this gaping plug hole. So, but apparently what I'm thinking is this is going to have to cut through here. I don't know. But, you're going to come along for the ride. So, let's see what happens. Alright, <clears throat> so here's the number one tomfoolery that's coming with this kit. It says that you need a one inch um, drill hole or whatever. I should have probably like read the instructions or whatever. You know, that's not my style. <laughs> but, I only have a three quarter. So, what we're going to end up having to do is um, drill as best as we can and maybe uh, wiggle it. I, I don't know. <laughs> i got to do something here. But basically, I'm just going to come on in and I'm going to drill a three-quarter inch hole. Two steps. Three, four, five. Am I close to the bench? Almost. Six. Alright. This is where it gets a little tricky. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Alright. 
So that didn't go too horrible. We've got a three quarter inch hole in our dust cap and fucking plastic shavings everywhere. They fell on the floor. That's just great. Son of a bitch. All right, so I'm gonna have to run to the store and get a um, one inch. I don't want this project turning out like shit. So I'll be right back. All right, everybody. So welcome back real quick. I just left and I went and bought a a real bit, right? And this one goes from 7.8 to 1.18, right? All right, well, I'm not great with tools. I never claimed to be in my life. I don't have a lot of tools right now. I used to. I don't know where they all went over the course of moving over the couple of years that I've been living in this world. So they're gone. So I bought this, and stupid me didn't realize how thick this bottom would be. And it doesn't go in here. So this is what I came up with. I got a little adapter that turns this able to use something like that and an, an 11 just so happens to fit so now I've got a makeshift uh, setup to uh, you know bore out a giant freaking one inch hole I don't recommend this and if you're laughing that's fine go right ahead I'm laughing at myself Show what this is gonna look like here. Come on, zoom in. How it uh, connects. Perfect fit, nice and snug. Nice and snug. Basically, you know, you're gonna, I wouldn't worry about exactly one inch. I, what I did was, I drilled until when I kept test fitting, until this cable, did a little thing where it was able to teeter tot its way through the hole but not completely go through so obviously you don't want it as wide as that but it teetered if you know what I mean it goes in and then the other side so once that did that I mean this is a very snug fit you can't really tell too much but this is a very snug fit I mean I'm very OCD with things so I might even put a little type of silicone um, around this once it's done but for right now, that's how it's gonna stay. Okay, so part of this little install involves removing the intake because you want more clearance. You want more room, you gotta run this wiring. It's a big wire that comes down. So that's what we just did. We removed it. I'm gonna take you off of this uh, tripod. Let me show you what we got going on so far. So far, I removed my little cover here. I'm still trying to figure out points that I want to um, mount the ballasts to what i was thinking about for this uh relay is something like here with a tie strap possibly we'll deal with that okay um there's really no right or wrong way to install these ballasts and uh the relay i've seen other people really mount these somewhere else but as far as i go there's a little bar here um it's got a little hole in it I'm gonna try to put it here so that that hole gets used as a point to mount with the tie strap. So basically we're gonna put that down. I'm gonna try to stick this there. And we'll put one more tie strap around the body of it. So hopefully that keeps it pretty, pretty secure. Alright, now that's on there pretty good, okay? Out of this big loom of wires, you're going to have this one. This is your signal wire. Everything with this kit is labeled, so that's pretty good. Now this is going to go to the actual headlight bulb, so we're not using that. Now you have this wire right here. This is for a ballast. Now what that will probably do is hook up to the ballast probably on this end over here so 
that'll hook up. But we don't need that right this second. Your other wire on this is the really, really long one. What that wire is gonna do is it's gonna, for us, it's gonna tuck across here, okay? And we're gonna get it to go all the way across there. I'm gonna do that in a second, because that's the one I wanna get mounted, okay? So, hold that there for a sec. Now this next wire is the power wire for this extra loom. This one is gonna get mounted to the power terminal on this box here, okay? So we'll put there for a sec, and then you got obviously the last wire, wire is pretty thick, and it's black, ha <laughs> ha, get it, jokes? But we all know if this would focus, which it never does. It never does, especially when you're wearing gloves and, you know, trying to get it to focus on stuff, but this is the ground wire. So that wire is gonna go on the ground. There's two grounds down there that we could use. You know, we're gonna pick and choose what we wanna use, when we wanna use it, but like I said, for right now, we're gonna keep these all aside. And we're gonna work with the big wire. I just wanna get that run, run across. So we're gonna leave this over there. All right, I'm gonna leave this over there. So all we have is the one big wire, okay? Alrighty, so we're taking you off the <laughs> large tripod and we're putting you on the small one. So like I said, there's a little bit of a nest here. We're keeping everything away at the moment. All of these, we're just gonna keep to the side. The only wire we're focusing on is the long wire that's gonna connect to that other side, the other ballast. Okay, so I'm gonna put you down. We're gonna find a good way to do this where we get some light on the subject. Down here is where everything starts. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we're looped around the back of this and we're gonna come up and we're gonna attach our first point to here. All right, what you need to make sure First of all, don't drop your camera. That's stupid. Okay. What you need to make sure is when you're putting these tie straps on, don't make them all tight yet. Just make it loose enough so that you can run um, cables back and forth just in case you don't have enough or you have too much. You don't want to put yourself in that position. We're going to go in and tuck this up. If we go in this lip here, as you can see, it goes in. Um, from right there, I'm going to probably put another tie strap in that area. Okay. All right. So we got that. Just chilling. Okay. Now we're going to move down more. So we're going to be... You're just running it across. I recommend better to put um, more tie straps than not. Specifically for the fact that you don't want wiring to droop or sag and come into contact with the belts that are right in the front here. So, like I said, don't put it too, too tight. But at the end, you will tighten it up. But down here, again, there's another little uh, black tab thing. So you're just going to go basically behind it. There's a little tab here. I'll try to get the goddamn flashlight. Every time you see these, nice light. Nice lighting. Professional filming. Anytime you see these um, rubber things that actually keep things stable here, you're going to go above on top of it. This is where it starts. You know what? I'm going to take you off of this. This is important stuff. Okay. As you're mounting, okay, you're going to be coming in, like I said, let me try to get some kind of light here. You're going to be coming in all the way across this whole setup. You're just going to do mounting points little by little. Now, when you get to a point like this, we just put a tie strap here. So now when you come in and you're following this, just keep this down here. Can I keep this down here? 
Is this going to be decent? Okay. If you follow the lines, they curve, and it comes down. So what you could do is snake this, and you're going to put it right behind that, basically. You know, as far as tuckage goes, tuckage is a good thing. So from here, you know, you just put a little, you know, put a little pressure to get the thing up. So now what I could do is tie strap this here around two of these. So I've got a good solid base point here. And then from there, I'm going to slowly, look at this, the camera gets stuck. I'm going to slowly make my way over. We're almost there. Ah, it's got blind. It's got blinded. Blinded. Blinded by my own lights and camera. And now, we have the option of getting this down into this general area. What we're going to do now, and, you know, some might disagree, but I think the best way to handle this right now is let's get the um, ballasts mounted because that's the part that you know kind of takes the most thought I guess if anything I mean this isn't really a complicated procedure it's just a matter of like finding mounting locations that you choose to be good for you I'm gonna start with this side and try to find a point to mount since that intakes off and it is Christmas and if I have to leave I might as well make sure that my car is drivable. And you got situations like this where you definitely want a good bond. You're gonna take your IPA rubbing alcohol mixture. I said before, I use one to one. I find that to be plenty strength. And you're gonna rub down on the paint wherever you think <clears throat> you're gonna be mounting everything. And even here, give the back of the uh, give the back of the um, ballast a quick wipe. You want adhesion. That's number one. So this is like a foam backed thing. It's 3M, so this should be good stuff. I mean, I don't think Diodynamics Dynamics would sell a kit that's all fucked up. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the one part. And we're going to line this up as best as we can. It's not perfect size, but, you know, we're going to put this on there. And we're going to push, okay? So we're going to make sure we got a good bond. Yeah, that ain't coming off. So we're going to keep this mounted. So let's just put pressure on this. I don't see that coming off without force. So that could be a success. We've got this one. This is supposed to connect the ballast. This is going to be connecting the ballast to the other side. So we're going to connect that I'm assuming it goes this way because there's um, clips so we're gonna push that in get a nice clip so that's good um, so we're gonna tuck that in here so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna remove this bulb that's in there okay. so we're gonna take this off we don't need this right now hopefully we don't need this again Now, as far as the headlight bulb goes, what I'm told is we're not going to be using the, uh, the connector, that one on this side. So, like we said, we did this already. So, what we're going to do is plug these things in. Goes right here. Right, you're going to see the tab. That's going to go into this and make sure that it clips down and locks. So you got this connector here, which is gonna go into the only other possible way, 
that's going to go in here and make sure you don't ever force anything with connectors like this so that should be how that looks if you want to be really uh, crazy you could put like a little tiny bit of electrical tape around the connector I don't really see a need for that right this second um, this from what I'm reading this isn't going to be used so we're going to tuck the uh, the cable in the stock one I'm going to tuck that in to the side All right now we're going to take the bulb out of its shelter And it's got a little rubber piece here. Now, just like the other bulbs that we've done, you're going to be putting this in there. And just make sure you line it upright and put it in correctly. in and we're gonna lock it down we've got a watertight seal folks okay okay everybody let's move on to this side the passenger side basically this shouldn't be too difficult the bulb is down in here so we're gonna stick our hand in we're gonna pull this out, All right? Everything's gonna come out with it. If you notice how there's a certain distance here to here, you can take, you can pull, right? If you look, I'm pulling on one side, each cable at a time, and I'm making it shorter. So basically, you're giving yourself more room to work on the inside of the cap, okay? I don't know if it makes too much more sense, but if you look now, now the distance from the inside of the cap to this is better. So it gives me a chance to work. Now as far as the bulb goes, again, we take it off. We take this little black shielding and we put the bulb in the hole. Let's just try to get all that in there first. So, after much fighting, I got the damn thing in. Now as far as all this shit goes, cancelers and whatnot. So we're gonna hook up down here, just like the other side, there's two other cables. Okay. So we're gonna hook those up to this this side's ballast. Alright, so we're gonna plug that one. And we're gonna plug This one, if we can get it to lock in, okay, that's in. We're going to look through the Loomis strings now and we're going to find the one that says signal. So what we're going to do, just like I said, keep this tucked in down here. It's going to be the one that comes off of the back, so it'll be the only one that's left. So we're going to hook that one up. Again, I hope, well, this should match. All right, that should be good. So, all right, we get a nice click. So let's just get that out of the way real quick. Now we're gonna take the last um, ballast one from the, la the one thing of strings, and we're gonna connect that to the other end of this ballast. Okay, it's only got one way to go on. So we're going to plug that, get a clip, and we're going to wipe this area off. Again, this can all be moved depending on, you know, your mood. But my mood right now is I'm going to be late for Christmas dinner. <laughs> so I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to get yelled at, so we're going to put this on there. So now we're going through 
get this ground wire out of here. We're gonna put all these wires out of the way the best we can so we don't tape them. And we're just gonna come down, right? And we're gonna do like we did with the other side and just give a good, you know, push down for like 10 seconds or whatever. Like I said, we've got all kinds of shit going on here now. And this is, this is nuts down here. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm taking off this ground there because we have to ground this. Now, as far as grounds go, this is the only like pretty logical choice for this. I'm gonna go in and just ground this. Come on, this is fucking. Is this real life right now? Is this real life? This is real life, right? I remember I got a comment one time from somebody. Real snobby person too. Like, uh, saying shit like, Oh, if you're gonna be working on your car, you better not be a cheap ass. And you better go get their the correct tools and he goes I'm a a something ASA ASS whole certified mechanic and you know we don't touch cars unless we have the right tools well listen buddy this is uh I'm not a fucking mechanic so I'm not perfect I never said I was anyway now that that's that little nuts off we're just gonna come in, try to ground that. All right, so we have everything together. Uh, the only thing we need to do at this point, right now, is plug power, ground, and test. I see lights. I see lights. I see lights coming. Okay, so for the next part, we removed this part of the battery that the power for the whole HID system was going to. What we're going to do is take a Dremel and we're going to basically notch out a little section here so that the wire sits flush and the cap can close. I'm not gonna film myself doing it, but just so you know, I will be using safety glasses. <laughs> And the reason I'm not filming that is because if I do, I'll probably, with my luck, end up getting some kind of finger sliced open like uh, Lance Stewart and I'll end up going viral. And I'm not ready for that kind of fame right now, so just enjoy. So, uh, unfortunately for some of you who would probably like to see me hurt, maimed, and injured, and destroyed, and dead, <laughs> I didn't end up uh, losing a finger. I still have them all here. Um, again, I want to remind everybody, I'm not... Um, I'm not BS for build. I don't have uh, some kind of crazy technical skills. I can't operate tools and I'm not super creative. So I tried to do what I could do with the little brain that God gave me, okay? So this is what I ended up coming up with. I did a little notch. It's not the cleanest work ever, but I did that. This way the wire could come through. And, you know, I ended up getting one of these things. It's a Sharpie paint pen, black. They've come in handy quite a lot. So, you know, obviously you all know that this thing was red at one point. I painted it. So, um, this way it doesn't have red around the edges and look like shit. So, it does look pretty good. I'm going to wait a few minutes. I'm going to put it back in. And what I'm going to do is just tidy up the wiring today because I was a lazy ass yesterday. And also because it was Christmas that I was trying to install this. And I had to run to my in-laws. So, I have to finish this. I'm going to just tidy up the wiring, show you an after picture of what the engine bay looks like, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is it. This is what the finished product looks like. This is what the engine bay now looks like. I have fully functional HIDs, thank God. And the best part is I don't have to have that adaptive uh, cruise control camera on the bottom of the grill, which really sets me through a loop. 
What I'm gonna do now is take you off the tripod. We're gonna just get an up close look. I wanna show you what the setup looks like now that it's a little bit tidied up. Um, this side is a work in progress. Um, I don't really particularly enjoy where I mounted the ballast, but I'm changing the intake and that's gonna dictate what I do soon. Um, so, you know, it is what it is right now, but it's subject to moving, you know, if that makes any sense, but let's just take you off and let's check it out. So on this side, as we said in the video, I um, cut a little notch in here so that it could come out without any issues and still shut and still be fully functional. Uh, over here, I tie strap the relay to this part. Okay, uh, the ballast is right here. All of the wiring is in there, and it doesn't look bad at all. You know, OCD and all, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, everything looks good on this side. As you can see, you can't see anything, actually, as far as any wires sticking out. So our tuck job worked out pretty well. Again, like what I said, this side, I'm not super pleased with the location of that. Um, but... Once we get the new intake, I'll decide what I'm going to do. There's a portion that goes this this way, which would kind of sit behind. Are you f***ing serious? Seriously. Ridiculous. Okay, so, um, as I was saying, the ballast, there's a little flat part that I might do. The way the intake comes is it comes straight down and into the little hole that's down there, which I actually have to cut a little bit of. Um, and like I said before, upon further investigation, this part was rubbing a little bit against here, so I have to either touch up this tank or get it painted or something, but it's definitely going to stay black because that makes the engine bay look better. You know, this is what you get. As far as final notes go, uh, I want to start out by saying, before anybody bashes me in the comments section, I am not a professional installer of anything. I've never done an HID kit in my life. The fact that it worked out first time for me without me having to like redo something is a minor miracle in and of itself. So, you know, it is what it is. And the fact that I did it proves that anybody could do this. Any one of you could literally do this. So, you know, there is a little hope. Obviously, some people aren't going to want to spend $150, $180 on an HID kit, sometimes upwards of more than that, um, when you can get the LED conversion bulbs for $50. What I will say is that the light output is very similar. It's just that this setup throws the light much farther than the LED conversion. The LED bulbs that I had were plenty fine for me. I was very happy, but you know, at the end of the day, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I do like changing things, I get bored, so I figured why not film some stuff. The most difficult part, in all honesty, is you know, drilling a hole into the back of your dust cap cover. Like that, that's really it. You drill a hole into each dust cap cover so that you could run the little uh, wiring and grommet setup. You're pretty much home free other than the point where you feel personally comfortable ma uh, mounting the ballasts. Do not follow my direct instructions and stuff. This is where I decided to mount them. You could mount them anywhere that makes sense as long as the wiring is good. So, you know, again, this, this, is, this is one of those things where you, you take what you get from each video that's on the internet, but you don't have to follow them directly. I'm not an expert. A lot of people that post it are far from experts. I just, you know, figured why not show my little dealings. Uh, again, this kit is made by Dial Dynamics. I went with them because I've had great results with them in the past for... Um, for my interior LEDs and everything, and so far so good with their bulbs. The ballasts do have a warranty, I believe, and you know, their customer service is very good. So as long as you installed everything correctly, I don't see any problems. Um, they have a really good reputation, as far as I'm concerned. I've never had a problem with them. I've never really read about a problem with them. Then again, I've never really tried to read about a problem with them. And I don't really want to look now, now that I've got their product <laughs> on my headlights. I don't really give a shit. As long as they work, that's it. I'm done. But again, this is it. Um, like I said, final final summation. Kit's pretty great. 
the the wiring's awesome. I did see a video online from Enlight or something like that, another kit. Uh, there was differences in the kit that make this one better as far as like plug and play type setup goes. It's really foolproof if you um, if you follow their diagrams. And again, this is the diagram that I went with. It comes with the kit. You know, basically just follow that. You know, end this video if you'd like. Um, again, the one thing I didn't show in the video was that I did disconnect the power to the battery in the trunk because whenever you're working with electrical components, you kind of want to always make sure the power to the car is off. You really never know what touching certain things might short circuit something. So it's be it's better to be safe than sorry. And it takes literally not that long. So again, you know, the only thing that bothers me now is the goddamn random red wiring. But I did take off that little flag that said battery. Again, that's optional if you're a freak like me. But other than that, the kit came out pretty sweet. Um, company's great. Kit's great. Again, I'm not sponsored by shit. I'm sponsored by myself. I'm not sponsored by mommy or daddy or any kind of uh, brand. So take it for what it is. You know, if, if you don't want to have that crazy camera that looks like shit as far as I'm concerned and you didn't get the HID kit, put an HID kit in or get an LED kit. Do something. Make it your own. It's your car. Go nuts. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.